Human life is first and foremost about relationships. We have different types of relationships. Many are casual. People enter into our lives and leave them, and hopefully there's no hard feelings. But for our most important relationships, there are expectations these expectations are based on understandings of what I ought to reasonably expect from you and what you ought to reasonably expect from me. Jewish tradition employs one central organizing principle to all these important relationships, and that principle is called Brit, or covenant. It's a word many of us shul-goers have heard before, covenant, but not one that is fully understood and sufficiently appreciated. Covenant is one of the most important ideas in Judaism, and I would suggest one of the most transformative ideas in all of religious history. Covenant is mentioned 283 times in the Bible and it creates a framework to define the nature of relationships between God and humanity, God and the Jewish people, God and each of the founding fathers of the Jewish people, those founders and their descendants, and indeed the relationships among all members of the Jewish people for all generations. And in a few days' time, we're going to celebrate a holiday whose central theme is covenant. So let me speak a little bit about what it means, where it came from, and how it applies to us. There are three major holidays in the Torah. Pesach, Shavuot, Sukkot. Pesach and Sukkot are linked with specific historical events. Pesach, obviously, with the exodus from Egypt. Sukkot, with the wandering in the desert before entering the land of Israel. Shavuot is the odd one out. It commemorates no historical event and is described in the Torah as more or less an agricultural festival marking the end of the grain harvest. It was a stroke of rabbinic genius to connect Shavuot with the events on Mount Sinai. How did they do it? Well, the Torah says that the Israelites reached Mount Sinai in the third month after the Exodus, 50 days after Pesach, which the Torah says is the holiday of Shavuot, is around the third month and thus enabled our tradition to say that Shavuot was that moment in the third month when the Torah was given. The rabbinic tradition redefined the holiday. It gave it a tremendous upgrade. And it kept the holiday meaningful even after the destruction of the temple. In the process, Shavuot gained a new name. The Talmud refers to the holiday not as Shavuot, but as Atzeret. Atzeret means conclusion. What is it the conclusion of? Shavuot is the concluding festival of Passover. It is the second stage of a two-part journey. That not only teaches us something about Shavuot, it teaches us something about Pesach, that there was something missing in that story. What was it? Pesach 
teaches us the theme that is at the heart of Judaism, and that is redemption, Geula. On Pesach, tyranny was overthrown. Human rights and human worth and human liberty were championed. And the prophets tell us that what happened at the time of the Exodus will someday happen to the whole world. But the whole process of the Pesach liberation was set into motion and carried out by God and God alone. As we say in the Haggadah, Lo al yedei malach, ve lo al yedei saraf, ve lo al yedei shaliach, ela hakadosh baruch hu bichvodo uve atzmo. The Holy One, blessed be He, He did it all, alone and with no helpers. Passover is a wonderful holiday, but it is incomplete. Passover's redemption leaves no room for humanity in the project. God gets all the glory we basically watch and enjoy. Enter Shavuot. On Shavuot, God summons humanity to participate in the process of creating a redeemed world world. God does this through the Jewish people who are not better than anybody else but who take on a binding commitment to teach the message of redemption to the rest of the world. That is the covenant. Expectations that God has of us and expectations we have of God. On Shavuot, God makes a promise. He says he will accompany the Jewish people every step of the way, even through periods of pain and suffering. No matter what befalls us, the people Israel will live eternally. As the Torah says, Ve'atem ha'devekim ba'donai Eloichem chayim kulchem hayom. You who cling to the Lord, you shall surely live today. And the Jewish people makes a promise too. We say we will work to make the world better, to work towards a society where human life and human thriving are supreme, to teach justice and righteousness, to create model community and model communities based on charitable deeds and acts of loving kindness, And we promise to remain distinct and unassimilated so that the Jewish covenant will endure and will be transmitted from generation to generation. The symbol of Shavuot is not matzah. It's not the four species. It is not the menorah. And it's definitely not cheesecake. (laughs) It is covenant, brit, We're preparing for this covenant already in last week's Torah reading, Bechukotai. After describing the exile of Israel, God tells our ancestors, Vizacharti et Briti, I remember my covenant with Jacob, with Isaac, with Abraham, and I will remember the land. Notice in that verse that Jacob, the last of the patriarchs, is listed first. Jacob is the only one of the three patriarchs who went into exile after having been born in the land of Israel. He is the only one who suffers in exile. The covenant with Jacob is God's promise. No matter where you go in this world, even in exile, I will be there with you. I will come out of exile with you. I will return you to your land to the land that is a huge part of what the Jewish covenant means. This morning, Parshat Bamidbar always comes just before Shavuot. In this morning's Haftarah, the prophet Hosea emphasizes that our relationship with God is like a marriage. Maybe the most famous covenant besides the Jewish covenant that we have, the covenant of marriage. 
He teaches Hosea when we sin, we don't simply violate God's law, but we're committing adultery. But still, God loves us and will, will in the end take us back. And so the Haftarah this morning ended with the lines we say every morning when we're putting on our tefillin. I will betroth you to me forever. I will betroth you to me in righteousness and justice, in acts of loving kindness and compassion. I will betroth you to me in faithfulness, and you shall know that I am God. This is all covenant. And this Shabbat, in many, many synagogues, we complete the study of Pirkei Avot. Usually you begin reading Pirkei Avot at Pesach, concluded at Shavuot. Pirkei Avot, the famous chapters of the Mishnah, it's all about the transmission of morals and ethics, beginning at Sinai, all the way through Joshua and the prophets to the rabbinic era. And on Shavuot itself, on Wednesday, we will reenact the experience at Sinai where our ancestors explained the most important words of Shavuot, Na'aseh v'nishma. When they were presented the Torah, our ancestors said, we'll do it and we will listen, committing themselves as a people to the covenant. And I'm not done yet. The main theme of the book of Ruth, which is the special reading of Shavuot, is love expressed as covenant. There's the covenant Ruth makes to Naomi. Remember, Naomi wants to send her daughter-in-laws away so they should go and find husbands. But Ruth stays by her side. She covenants to be part of the Jewish people, covenants into a relationship with God. You remember her words. Do not urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people. Your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me severely, even if death separates you and me. And where does this covenant bring us at the end of the story of Ruth? To a man named Boaz who marries Ruth. Boaz is called the Goel, the Redeemer. He redeems her. Covenant opens the story. Redemption concludes it. That is the paradigm of the Jewish story. This, I hope, helps us understand why Shavuot does not have any special rituals and, at least in the Torah, isn't connected to any historical event. Because if the theme of Shavuot is covenant, then it's not about an event that happened in the past, but a relationship that shapes us and defines us as Jews every day. On Shavuot, we celebrate a relationship that is ongoing and a tradition that continues to unfold. When we ascend to bless the Torah, we don't say, Baruch Atah Hashem Natan HaTorah. Blessed is the one who gave the Torah, but blessed is the one who is Notain, the one who gives it. Just as a diamond, when carved out of an unshaped stone, reveals brilliant new facets and lights, so does the unfolding of Torah on a daily basis reveal dimensions and meanings that were not initially apparent. Notain ha Torah. We receive the Torah anew every day. We live today in the most open and free society in the history of the world. The ideas of enduring loyalties being betrothed to something forever, as the Haftarah said. Commitments, covenants, they run against the grain. But I will say that for me at least, attaching my short, finite life to a mission that is a vast and enduring has given me tremendous joy and meaning and comfort. To choose again to be part of this covenant is to choose to become 
part of a people that is eternal. That's why Jews sing, Am Yisrael Chai. That's why Jews sing, Od Avinu Chai. That's why Jews sing, David Melech Yisrael, who was born and died on Shavuot, Chai Chai Vekayam, lives on and endures. That's why we are sacrificing our lives and marching on the streets for a land that was promised to us thousands of years ago, whose redemption we yearn for and await. And so this week, in the midst of a difficult time in the world, where the Jewish story is being challenged, I invite you all, whether you're coming to shul or not for Shavuot, to reaffirm our story, to be proud of it, to affirm our place, our individual place in that story. We will focus on our link in the chain of Jewish history that began at Sinai and that will continue long after we're gone. We will stand again at the foot of the mountain with all the generations that came before us and all the ones who will come after. We will remember our sacred mission as God's people of partnership, tasked with repairing the world and serving as a light unto the nations. And we will revisit our destiny as the Am Sugula, the nation of the covenant, the carriers of redemption's past, the harbingers of redemption's future. Shabbat Shalom and Chag Sameach.